Hi there, welcome back to the YouTube channel again. I'm back again with yet another deck tech for you today. Today's deck tech is really a bit of a follow on from yesterday. I got quite inspired by doing the Karth deck from yesterday and I decided to go back and see if I could think of another deck I could do that's a similar message. Um, and then I remembered probably two weeks ago by the time you watch this video, I got beaten up quite significantly the other night by an Esper's Planeswalkers deck on my stream. That Planeswalkers deck was using a part of the pairing I don't really agree with. Well, hmm, I agree with it. I can understand why people play it. It's a strong part of the pairing. That was Tevash Sat Doom of Fools partnered with Ayesha Ojatai Dragon Speaker. So basically, whenever you cast a spell, the Ojatai got bigger. And then Tevash was basically there putting it, pumping out Thrall tokens and controlling the board that way. And then nicking everyone's commanders because there's no way a lot of us could get, you know, I think we all ended up with sort of like one one or two creatures in play at any one time. And there's no way you could get through enough. And basically we kept losing our commanders to Tevash. And you know, the person playing it played it really well. I was really impressed with it. But it gave me an idea. Esper Planeswalkers has been around as a format, not just in Commander, but in Standard, in Modern. I think it's seen a little bit of play in Pioneer at this stage. And I decided it's time to do something a little bit different. So I was going through my collection. And I realised, to my disappointment, you know, to my pure and utter shock, there was one commander that worked really well with this that I've never done anything with on this channel. So, without further ado, here we go. It's Neverall, Herbal Tyrant. Three white, blue and black for a 3-6 zombie lit wizard. That's fine. Hexproof for artifacts, creatures and enchantments. Perfect. Keeps it safe to a certain degree. And when it comes in, when Neverall comes into play... If you destroyed any more creatures that turn, you get some 2-2 two, two tap zombie tokens equal to the number of the creatures that died. But it's the last one, is the big one from my point of view. When Neverwill dies, you may pay one. When you do, destroy all artifacts, creatures and enchantments. Yeah. Neverwill, Neverwill's disc. Yep, that's what we're going to do with. Because it doesn't touch Planeswalkers. I'm so glad when Wizards printed this back in... Um, the original Commander Legends set, that they kept the wording the same. So this lets your Planeswalkers survive, which to my point of view is absolutely fantastic. So how does this look? Well, this is how the deck looks. Just move this over a bit. We've got the usual selection of blue, black, white lands, including Fable Passage and Field of the Dead somewhere. There's Fable Passage, Field of the Dead. There you go. Uh, we've got Reliquary Tower in a little bit further down when I get to R. Can't, I can't click on it now. There it is, Reliquary Tower. There we go. Temple is in as well. And I've also included Urborg. Hence why, out of all the basics, Plains and Islands have got three and there's only two swamps in the deck. I figured that was easier that way of doing it. But it's the usual selection of blue, black, white lands you'd expect to find in a deck like this. The ramp side of it goes with Mox Tantalite. Goes for a soul talisman, goes for a mana crypt, goes for a mana vault, soul ring, arcane signet, all of the diamonds in the respective colours, backed up with felwild stone and thought vessel, so we've still got our maximum hand size, and solemn simulacrum over here as well. There is one thing I will point out this deck, if you look at the price of it on the deck link that I've left in the comments. Yeah, it's not going to be cheap because I've also included Time Twister. Now, as I've said many times before, Time Twister on MTGO is reasonably cheap. Time Twister in real life is one of the most expensive Power 9 cards you get. <laughs> Don't build this in real life if you're going to do it. If you've got a Time Twister and you want to do it anyway, fine, feel free. I'm very pleased that you've managed to keep a Time Twister. But for most of us normal people, you're going to try and build this in real life. Just replace this with something else. Um, commit to memory springs to mind. It does, you know, helps a little bit more by bouncing or countering your spells, kind of. And then you can pay the six mana and get it out of your graveyard and shuffle everything back in that way. I'm just doing it with Time Twister, um, backed up with the Elixir of Immortality, just so I've always got one of them kicking around. So bear that in mind. Going from there. It's really a case of talking about what we've got. Cyclonic Rifts in, just so I can control the board a little bit more than I usually do. And then we've got some a couple of interesting things. We've got Ghostly Prism, and we've got Propaganda to help slow down the combat of people attacking us, because we want to keep our Planeswalkers in play. We've got Oath of Gideon, Oath of Jace, Oath of Liliana, and somewhere if I can spot it, 
Oath of Teferi as well. I decided to play all four Oaths in the respective colours. This seems like a pretty good plan to me. And, you know, especially if we get Oath of Teferi and doing both your loyalty abilities twice a turn really adds up very quickly for some loyalty counter gaining. So, after that, where are we going to go from there? So, if I just go down here. Time twist I've mentioned. So, I've got Party Jace, as I prefer to call it. It's purely because no one kills it because you just let everyone draw cards, which is fine. I've got Jace the Mirror Mage as well. Hopefully we can get it kicked so we get a copy as well and then just scry through our deck and get the things we need. Liliana of the Last Hopes in as well for the plus one to the sh you know, hopefully kill all the small creatures. No elves, Bird of Paradise, so on and so forth. And if we can get up to minus seven to do the whole zombie thing, I'll be very happy. Oath of Kaya is the other oath I forgot to mention. It comes into play does three damage to any target and you gain three life and whenever a creature or opponent attacks a planeswalker you control with one or more creatures oath of exile oath of kai deals two damage to that player and you gain two life so it's a little bit good from my point of view m and r2 the fate shifters in really to manipulate the top of our library now you could swap these over quite happily and play an extra land and use m and r2 if you've got one as your commander for this deck it wouldn't make that much difference i just like having neverwell over here because it can clear the board by playing the one so bear that in mind speaking of things that help mangara the diplomats here so when people attack us we get to draw the cards day of judgment shatter the sky uh cleansing nova doomscar fumigate austere commander all here as well to help really control all those creatures that we have going on Jace, Wielder of Mysteries, gives us a kind of a mini win condition if we can get down to sort of like six cards in our library and then minus eight it to draw seven and then win the game that way. Seems like a good plan. But really, it's just like plus one, mill someone who's not going to appreciate having their deck milled and gets to draw a card. Liliana, Waker of the Dead's in as well. We want to try and get this to minus seven so we can start building a small zombie horde as well. So bear that in mind. Dovin bands in just so we can do the plus one to annoy some of the creatures. The minus one's pretty good as well. Uh, just so we can gain the life and draw a card. And if we can get to the minus seven, yeah, why not? Let's do that as well and annoy our players. Right, Narset Transcendence in as well. Your opponents can't cast non-creature spells. Seems like a good plan to me if we can get to the minus nine. It's unlikely, but it's only a six. It does start as loyalty, so Narsa it's very hard to kill, especially if you do the plus one a couple of times, which will probably help us hit a planeswalker, to be fair. If I remember correctly, yep, yeah. non land, non creature card, yeah, should help us get there. Soren's in because he produces little vampires that help keep us alive a little bit longer. Uh, Likewise, Savitri Dragon Master's in for the until your next turn part of it at the plus one. And then the minus seven to destroy all non-dragon creatures. Not that difficult, this deck. But we will see. Sorry, a bit of a yawn there. Apologies. Tezzeret the Scheme is in to produce the colourless artifact tokens. Um, I can't remember what they're called for him. I think they're called uh, Ethereum Cells, if I remember correctly. They're not treasure tokens, so I expect if this was printed nowadays, it would be treasure tokens, so, you know. And, of course, you know, I'm playing Neville as my commander. I've got to play Neville's disc as well. Another way of blowing everything up and leaving your planeswalkers behind. Cleansing Nova Doom Scar Fumigate. Uh, Tamiyo, the Moon Sage. Tap opponent down. Tap a permanent down. And opponent controls so doesn't untap. This is really good if you use it on something like Gaze Cradle. Slow standard mana development of green decks. Um, draw a card for each tap creature target player control. So if someone's attacking your friends and you get this down, you can actually get a whole load of cards quite happily and make sure you're always going to be casting planeswalkers for the next few turns. Temple manipulations in, along with Nexus of Fate, just so I can take some extra turns as things go along. Crux of Fate blows the world up. Liliana Vess, you've all seen Liliana Vess, one of the original planeswalkers from the original five. Minus two is what we've got it in here for, but if we can do the minus eight and give us guess nick all the creatures that we've blown up with some of our removal spells, fine by me. Um, Liliana Death's Majesty's in as well, just so we can do the whole zombie tokens. Obnixus again for the demon tokens it creates, but you know, plusing one and gaining that maybe up to three life is really quite nice. And the original Obnixus is in as well, really to destroy target creature. If we can get to the minus eight and target opponent 
cast oh, hold on sorry move my mouse um whenever a target opponent gets an emblem with whenever a player casts a card you lose two life we can get to there we're winning and dancing and laughing elminster's in draw card scry to manipulate the top of our deck seems like a good plan court of oh oath of teferi i've mentioned so if we're having the oath in we better have teferi himself which is here just so we can go and get the cards at the beginning of our, you know, on top of two lands and draw a card. Seems like a good plan to me. Venza, the Sojourner's in, just so we can plus two it and flicker in things that we want flickered in and out. Probably other Planeswalkers, to be perfectly fair, but, you know, flicker them in, they forget what they've done, you get to do it again. Time Wipe should have been part of the other set of cards I was talking about. I forgot it was down the bottom here at five mana. That does the same thing. We get to bounce a creature if we've got one in play and blow everything else up. So it seems like a good plan. And Ashiok Nightmare Sage is in. The plus one's what this is in here for. The two, three generation of tokens. So going on to six drops. Uh, Austere Command I've mentioned. Elspeth is in as another way of removing stuff. Yes, it does provide us with a load of blockers if we need them. But it's mainly here to do the um, minus three, destroy all creatures with power of four or more. Sun Titans in just to return anything that gets destroyed early in the game. I'm um, looking at you, Ghostly Prism and Propaganda and all of these here, uh, with the exception of obviously Psychonic Rift. Jace, Arcane Strategist, to draw the cards. And when if we draw the second card each turn, we get to chuck a plus one, plus one counter on one of our creatures. We've only got three creatures in the deck, so it's not going to be that often, but the plus one draw card is nice. Ooh, sorry. I've been a long day today. Right, Sorin. Come on, Sorin, where are you? Sorin. Hello, Sorin. There we go. Grim Nemesis. Uh, real top card of your library. Put that card in your hand. Each opponent loses mana life to its face value. This is one of our primary win conditions if we can get there. Likewise, the other version of our dear friend Ashioxin. Uh draw a card for each player mills mills two cards. Put target card creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Gain control of all creatures target opponent controls. Yeah. Helps us win the game big time. Last two cards, next to the fate I've already mentioned. And you know, we're playing a planeswalker Dex for all pens and purposes. Might as well have Ugin in as well just so we can do it and that's it that is the deck i don't think i've put anything else in that goes above that he says just trying to move this across we can have a look no okay um and that's where we are so i hope you enjoyed this little take on our dear friend over here neville herbal titan it's a little bit different to my usual decks because we are blowing everything up and I'm hoping that we can keep Neverill in play. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching the video. As I said at the start, I'd really love it if you could hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Uh, at the moment it's recording this, I've got 925 subscribers, on, um, 925 subscribers to go. I've got 75 at the moment, but I need another 925 so I can actually start earning some money from all these videos we put up. I'm up to, I think this is video 137 on the channel now. Um, so please feel free to go back through the YouTube channel and have a look see and see what else is there. Uh, leave me a comment. There's also a link in the description of the video for my Twitch. Where I stream on a Tuesday and a Thursday in the evening on the UK time. So it's like between half past seven and eight o'clock I start. Go to about ten, half ten, depending what the day is. And then there's all, and I usually do something on a Sunday afternoon unless I'm at a tournament at my friendly local gaming store. But, you know, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know what I've missed out that will make Neville Herbal Titans Planeswalker deck even better than what I've just described and gone through. And I'm sorry about all the yawning because I have been really tired. But anyway, that's it from me for now. Take care. And hopefully I'll catch you on Twitch and see you soon. Have fun, guys. Bye.